Clostridia. It is following four important species. Clostridium perfringens, Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium difficile. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be talking about Clostridium perfringens in detail. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So let's jump straight into the video. But before talking about Clostridium perfringens in detail, let me give you an overview of bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified based on gram staining and acid fast stain. On the basis of acid fast stain into acid fast bacteria, there are certain other bacteria like spirochetes and there's an exception for the mycoplasma bacteria. On the basis of gram staining, bacteria are further classified into gram negative and gram positive. Gram negative bacteria are further classified into cocci and rods. We're not concerned with gram negative because we're talking about clostridium and that is gram positive bacteria. Let's talk about gram positive bacterial classification. They're further classified into cocci and rods. Rods are further subdivided into not spore forming and spore forming rods. The spore forming rods are further classified into filamentous and non filamentous, while the spore forming rods are further classified into aerobic, for example, bacillus, and anaerobic, for example, clostridium. The aerobic and anaerobic both are further classified uh, into motile and non motile. The aerobic motile rods, for example, bacillus cereus, and the non motile aerobic rod, for example, bacillus anthracis. The non motile anaerobic rod is clostridium perfringens, and we are going to talk about that in today's video. The motile anaerobic rods are Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium difficile. Clostridium perfringens is the gram positive rod. It is obligate anaerobic. It is catalase and superoxide dismutase negative. It is non motile because this bacterium has no motility apparatus like a flagella. As in this picture, you can see that this bacterium is rod shaped. Rod means kind of rectangular shape. This bacterium is responsible for producing many toxins like alpha intero, beta, epsilon, and iota. This bacterium is also responsible for forming spores. Let me tell you a story. Clostridium perfringens thrives in this soil and it doesn't require oxygen for that purpose. You know why? Because oxygen is toxic to it. When it feel like to have oxygen, it produces spores. Okay, and spores are resilient to the environment and they can even survive cooking. When food is slowly cooked or stored, fully fledged clostridia are formed. Clostridium perfringens is the fastest growing bacterium on optimal temperature. It belongs to the family of Clostridia. It is responsible for causing two distinct diseases based on the route of entry. First one is food poisoning and the second one is gas gangrene that is also called clostridial myonecrosis. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction, classification and now we'll be looking at morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention and at the end as usual we'll review the lecture. Morphology, this bacterium is club shaped, it is rectangular rod. It is pleomorphic, the word pleo means many and morphic is from morph which means shapes so this bacterium exists in many shapes like it might have rounded or truncated and it may be straight or curved rod it varies in size from 3 to 8 micrometers into 0.4 to 1.2 micrometer it is purple or blue in color what because it is gram positive bacterium structure this bacterium has got thick peptidoglycan layer in its cell wall that is the reason that it is gram positive because this layer is thick and it retains the dye on the gram staining this bacterium is encapsulated which means that this bacterium has a capsule that protects it it is non-motile because it has no motility apparatus like a flagella or a cilia this bacterium is spore forming it has certain subtypes like a b c D and E. But the A and C, these two are really important. I'm going to talk about these two in the pathogenesis. It is also responsible for releasing certain toxins like alpha, beta, epsilon, iota, and entero. We are going to touch upon these toxins in the pathogenesis section. As in this picture, you can see that this bacterium is rod shaped. As it is pleomorphic, it has got curved or truncated ends. It might be straight like that or slightly curved like that one. Habitat hosts. Human beings are the hosts and the primary locations in the human beings are colon and vagina and they are parts of the normal flora of these two areas and it can also be found in animals specifically its colon. The sources include soil, rotting vegetation, marine sediment, contaminated or reheated food. Transmission. For food poisoning, exotoxin in food is ingested. 
if no exotoxin the bacteria itself is ingested in large amounts by humans or animals and this bacteria is responsible for causing food poisoning for gas gangrene the spores in soil enter the wound what kind of wounds the war wounds or the wounds caused by automobile and motorcycle accidents or septic abortions pathogenesis clostridium perfringens is divided into a to e types but as i mentioned earlier the two types c type a and type c are of really high yield type a is responsible for causing most human diseases while type c is responsible for causing necrotizing enterocolitis pathogenesis virulence factors before talking about that let me tell you that this organism grow in traumatized tissue especially muscle and produce a variety of toxins the most important is the alpha toxin the lecithinase the phospholipase that destroys the phospholipids where are the phospholipids present i'm going to tell you in a moment that leads to gas production the alpha toxin is responsible for damaging the cell membranes of erythrocytes this is what i want to tell you the phospholipids are present in the cell membranes right and this leads to two important things the first one is hemolysis and the second one is the degradative enzymes these enzymes are responsible for producing gas so alpha toxin is responsible for causing gas gangrene and alpha toxin acts on the areas where there is compromised blood supply the second important toxin is the enterotoxin as its name shows that it will be responsible for causing food Food poisoning because the word entero means intestine and it acts to cause diarrhea and its mode of action is similar to that of staphylococcal aureus enterotoxin that's why it acts as a super antigen and is heat labile it's responsible for causing food poisoning the third toxin is beta toxin it is responsible for causing necrotizing enterocolitis the fourth toxin in the list is epsilon toxin it does what it converts the protoxin the inactive one into the active toxin in the presence of trips and that leads to increased vessel permeability the fifth toxin in the list is iota toxin that is responsible for increased vessel permeability and necrosis as i talked about earlier that this bacterium the clostridium perfringens is responsible for causing gas gangrene and gas gangrene includes myonecrosis myo means muscle and necrosis means cell death the cell death in the muscles and the necrotizing fasciitis is often termed as flesh eating bacteria and the second disease is food poisoning clinical findings for gas gangrene pain edema cellulitis and gangrene the necrosis occur in wound area if crepitus is palpated in affected tissue it indicates gas in that tissue this gas is typically hydrogen produced by anaerobic bacteria hemolysis and jaundice are common as are blood tinged exudates a foul smelling bloody vaginal discharge can also occur in endometritis shock and death can also occur why death because this bacterium is responsible for causing myonecrosis it is destroying muscles and it is causing necrotizing fasciitis which is flesh eating disease that's why it can lead to death and it has really high mortality rates food poisoning this disease has an 8 to 16 hour incubation period and is characterized by watery diarrhea with cramps and little vomiting that resolves in 24 hours. Lab diagnosis will need sample of soft tissue and exudate microscopy on gram staining this bacterium comes to be gram positive under microscopy we see that this bacterium is club or rod shape it varies in size from 3 to 8 micrometers into 0.4 to 1.2 micrometer and it's purple or blue in color because it's gram positive as in this picture you can see that this bacterium is rod shaped just like that and it might be straight like that or might be slightly curved just like that one spores are not usually seen because they are formed primarily under nutritionally deficient conditions culture this bacterium is cultured anaerobically and then identified by sugar fermentation reactions and organic acid production prostrital perfringes colonies exhibit a double zone of hemolysis on blood agar and the colonies also produce a precipitate in egg yolk agar caused by the action of lecithinase and serologic tests are not useful this one on the left side is the blood agar and these are the colonies and this one is the egg yolk agar and on this you can see this precipitate produced by a clostridium perfringens treatment food poisoning is treated on the basis of symptoms but for gas gangrene the drug of choice is penicillin g the difference between penicillin g and we is just of the route of administration the penicillin g is administered 
intravenously, while the penicillin G is given orally. So don't get confused when I say penicillin G or penicillin V. It's just the penicillin with the difference of route of administration. And we can also give certain other antibiotics like pepricillin, tazobactam, along with clindamycin. And we can also go for surgical debridement. Prevention. Wounds should be cleansed and debrided and there's no vaccine that can work against Clostridium perfringens. And for food poisoning, food should be adequately cooked. Alright guys, let's wrap up today's video in this short table. The organism we discussed today is Clostridium perfringens. It is responsible for causing two distinct diseases, the gas gangrene and food poisoning. Its mode of transmission is via GI tract if it is causing food poisoning and it enters the wounds if it is causing gas gangrene. Humans and animals are the hosts and the primary locations in humans are colon, the gut or vagina and in animals is the colon. The sources are soil, rotting vegetation, marine sediment, contaminated or reheated food. And the diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy and culture. The diseases caused by this bacterium are treated with penicillin G, pepricillin, tazobactam and clindamycin. And we can also go for surgical debridement. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter. And that's it. I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamualaikum.